Well, welcome to this video and I hope you like it. If you do, click the like button, hit subscribe, and share with a friend. Okay, this should be a short one. Just wanted to talk a little bit about misdirection in the media. And especially the things that I would highlight the most would be um, GMO crops and fracking. And um, you know, you always see the thing with the with the fracking. You're real scary. A guy turns on the faucet, and they come over with a lighter and a little flame, showing that you know there's something flammable got into their water. Um, natural gas can occur in somebody's uh, well water. Um, it, it can do that with or without fracking. Um, not that it's a good thing, um, but uh, you know, natural gas is usually almost pure methane. It might have a couple of trace other things in it, but um, you know, methane is a, a carbon atom with four hydrogens on it. Um, it it's not chemically that bad for you. Um, it's not good. It's not like you want to be inhaling the stuff or ingesting it in your food, but it's not You know, it's not some You know extreme poison or something that chronic exposure is going to give you cancer or something it, It's just you know, it's not like benzene or something um, But it makes for a good news story. It's something you can show somebody you know it's a lot harder to show somebody, you know, a glass of water that looks like like nice, good, clear water that has some sort of a carcinogen in it that you can't see it. Doesn't make for as good of a news story. Um, the the big thing with fracking is the fracking chemicals themselves, which are not methane. Um, the way that fracking works is basically there's little little bubbles of uh, natural gas. Sometimes there's little pockets of petroleum trapped in shale. Shale is a sedimentary rock. It's layered, so you got things trapped in in these layers, compressed under the earth, and fracking uses directional drilling. They can drill down in one spot and then they'll drill horizontally and they can drill horizontally in more than one direction. They, they're, they've developed the technology to do a lot of fiddling around under the ground. But fracking stands is short for fracturing. What they're doing is they're actually going down there and they're setting off explosions to break up this rock and release these little trapped bubbles and pockets in there. And then they want to take it out. To do that, they inject water with sand mixed in it under pressure. Now the, the purpose of doing this is they want to get the sand up in there to hold all these little cracks or fractures open so that they can extract the uh, the oil and gas. Now, you know, it, some it, a kindergartner kind of knows that sand and water don't stay mixed. You know, go to the beach and stir stir around some seawater in, in a bucket, and you know the sand just drops right to the bottom. So they use emulsifiers. Emulsifiers are things that that sort of keep things mixed. The emulsifiers that they use, we don't know what they are. It has not been made public. It is considered a trade secret. Supposedly, they have told the, uh, you know, some of the regulatory agencies what some of these things are, but we really don't know the formula for the stuff they're using to keep the sand mixed in with the water. 
these chemicals are what you need to worry about. We don't know what they are. We don't know what their level of toxicity is or isn't, because some things are safe in small amounts, but they're harmful in larger amounts. And some things, they're safe if, if you're exposed to it once or twice, but if you have chronic exposure over a number of years, it causes health problems and cancers and things like that. No idea what this stuff is. They say that it, the best scenario they give us is it's something like uh, conditioner, like hair conditioner, like, like, like shampoo type stuff. No idea exactly what that means or, or, or what's in it. Like I said, it's not really public information exactly what these chemicals are. So even if you did have contamination in your well, if you don't know what you're looking for, or even if you, you happen to find something, it's hard to point the finger at them when you don't really know what they put in the ground and what they didn't put in the ground and you know what are you looking for and if you just happen to find, hey, there's some chemical in my water, can you point your finger at them? Or you know, is it something that some farmer spraying on his field up up a uh, hill from you or or what you, you don't know so that's what you need to look for but like I said you've got this misdirection in the media about you know the, 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 the flaming faucet pictures and that and the flaming faucet pictures are bullshit you know as an environmental engineer that doesn't worry me not not a you know I wouldn't want it in in my water but that's not the main risk we're, we're worried about with fracking and um, as far as the safety of fracking the, the biggest problem is the fact that they you know the regulation went down uh, right about the time that fracking boomed not that the regulations themselves changed so much as just you know they, they started defunding a lot of the environmental agencies that are enforcing these laws they don't have enough people out there going through the permits and you know inspecting these things and when nobody's watching people take shortcuts so you know that's the biggest problem I mean you can argue over the regulations whether whether hey you know if we do th if they do things to the letter of the regulations is, is it safe or isn't it safe but that's a completely different scenario from when they they really don't have the oversight that they should in most cases um, and a lot of these these things you know you, you're you're looking at the big oil companies always but a lot of these they're, they're smaller companies that you don't really hear about you know that that, that are doing the actual um, drilling and, and such that are subcontractors to these larger companies and a lot of these guys you know they've they've got shafe, shaky environmental and safety um, track records you know you can look at say a, a um, a Shell or a British Petroleum or, or an Exxon Mobil and although these guys have gotten some negative publicity they, they, you know they're they're the face of, of the industry but you know you can look at their safety record and their environmental record and it's totally different than these little subcontractors you know the, the guys flying around in, in pickup trucks working on these these wells and the people running the 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 tankers and and with the the uh the frack water and and stuff like that they're subcontractors these are different companies a lot of them have a lot a lot more dismal records um so that's it for that the other thing is the whole thing with the gmo crops a lot of people are looking at you know the whole franken food thing like you know if you grow genetically modified soybeans there it, somehow it's, it's going to hurt you to eat it um i really generally don't believe that there's a slight chance of something creating an allergic effect that wasn't there before 
because you know slightly different proteins slightly something slightly different for you to be allergic to but in general you know regardless of whether it's genetically modified or not my body's going to digest it it's going to pass through my system just fine the the problems are economic and, and political and environmental as far as what's going on it's not a good scenario to be creating a crop that you can that's it's immune to herbicide so you can just carpet bomb the earth with pesticide you know using the the roundup ready soybeans as uh, you know the example that style of farming is not environmentally friendly it, you know it, it's very bad for the environment because those herbicides when they're they are over, even when they're normally applied let alone over applied you know they run off and kill other plant life they can kill plant life in streams which can contribute to algal blooms because if the nutrients aren't being taken up by plants farther upstream eventually when the stuff drifts far enough downstream to where the herbicide is no longer taking an effect all of a sudden you've got all this nutrients and you you get an algal bloom um you know it affects insects it you know uh, there's it, it's basically not 100 percent proven but it's pretty likely that glyphosate is a carcinogen it is listed by the the groups that that track these things as a carcinogen putting more of it into the environment isn't a good thing um, they also you know they'll, they'll tout how this stuff is going to um, you know it's going to end hunger or something I, I have no idea how because people obviously don't understand how much food waste there is currently in in the developed part of the world I mean we raise soybeans to feed the cows to make in the burgers uh, to go to a McDonald's to be pitched if they if they sit up in in on the the little uh, you know ready to go little little stack there for too long they they pitch them and I mean this part of the model of fast food there's so much waste in our system you know we we could. It, it, you know that, that's a whole other tangent I don't want to go down but you know most of your your famines are caused by things like wars and natural disasters you know it, GMO crops aren't flood proof they're not drought proof I mean you might make something a little bit more drought resistance but if you don't get shit for rain for three years in a row it's not really going to overcome that irrigation overcomes that uh you know it's in you know war is a big part there's, there's so many things that, that go into famine if you really look into what causes most of your big famines it has nothing to do with the ability to produce food globally or somewhere else either they have some disaster that wiped out the crops there and it's usually something that a GMO crop isn't going to have any effect on or it's political turmoil there's some reason why people aren't able to farm or you've got you know rival militias stealing all the supplies and things like that. that's part of what happened in Ethiopia they were undergoing a civil war people other countries were sending them food the, the food wasn't making it to the people that's part of the problem a, a genetically modified crop does not solve that and the other thing and there's already been court cases in this country about it is the gen genetically modified crops are patented the companies hold a patent they own the crop you cannot save your seeds and and replant the stuff it, it, you know it's illegal you're, you're violating their their patent you're stealing their intellectual property therefore they are creating a monopoly on seeds this is a really big deal in your developing world your so-called third world countries where poor farmers you know rely on you know saving in, in part of their crop and replanting those seeds and now all of a sudden they can't do that and what's even scarier is even if they don't buy into the genetically modified crop if their neighbor does and most of your grains are wind pollinated 
you know, the wind blows your direction, all of a sudden, you know, your wheat or your corn or, or whatever carries that marker from that, that genetically modified crop, now you can be sued because you are, are, are growing the, the genetically modified uh, product because it, it, the pollen crossed with what you were already had. So you are illegally growing a crop and they can come after you and, and extort money out of you or force you to you know, buy seed from them. So it, it, you know, it's a money grab. And there have been farmers sued in the United States like that, growing grain, and they were not growing the genetically modified crop, but one of their neighbors was, and it cross-pollinated with theirs, and they ended up being sued for growing the, the genetically modified crop without having, without having paid for, for the seed. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's got a dark underside there. It, it's about, you know, domination of agriculture by a few of these companies producing these genetically modified crops. There is no real good upside for it in most cases. There are always exceptions to the rule. As a rule, I dislike you know, the use of genetically modified anything or releasing genetically modified things into the environment. Um, there are always exceptions to the rule. I mean, you, you've got to let science prevail, but if you look at what they're doing, I mean, these are the same type of companies that are like Nestle trying to buy up all the groundwater everywhere in trying to, to say that, you know, people don't have a fundamental right to clean water. You know, they're, they're trying to have people buy the balls so they can extract money out of them. That's what genetically modified agricultural products are about, you know. You, you can spin it whatever way you want in the media, and part of the problem is, instead of focusing on the actual issues, everybody's worried about, oh, they're gonna create some sort of, you know, potato or soybean or something, and it, you know, it, it, it's gonna make everybody sick, it's gonna poison everybody. Slight possibility of an allergic reaction in general, you know, your, your stomach just sees, you know, fats, proteins, carbohydrates, and, and some vitamins and trace minerals. No matter how they're put together or, or what interbred with what, your stomach breaks it down the same way and it, it is going to use it the same way. So, you know, the whole Frankenfoods argument is, is just a, a minor sideshow. But at any rate, I'm going to wrap that up there. I'm, I'm sure I can thumb through the news and find other examples. But, you know, you got to watch about the misdirection on these things because to some extent it helps the people you should be arguing against. I mean, you know, if your main argument against a, a certain thing such as GMO crops or fracking is attacking something that's not really that big of an issue and you know it, it's all spun and sort of conspiracy theorized in the media you know it deflects any criticism of the real issues so keep that in mind you know do your homework scratch a little deeper than the surface and see what the hell's going on with some of these things um, maybe I'll do something more in depth on both the, the GMO crops and the, uh, you know, how fracking works in the future. But, you know, I wanted to focus mainly on the sort of false media focal points that happen with some of these issues. You know, it's like you're, you're looking over here and what you, where you really should be looking is over there. So that's it for this one. Like, subscribe. Uh, check out my website. Hopefully I'll get some merch going soon and uh, see you on the next one. Well, I hope you found that video informative. Hopefully it made you think and uh, please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done that already and check out the video that should be appearing somewhere around me here and uh, 
I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.